Hello everybody, my name is Isaac and I am Shaftev and today we're going to be looking at placing tiles on a tile map in the Godot engine. This tutorial is derived from the work that I did in the game I made for the GMTK game jam. You can check that devlog out here. I'm going to put it here. Um, so yeah, check that out. Uh, what we did there was we were able to create a button and when the player jumped on that button the tiles were placed to create a bridge or to allow the player to jump into an area where it couldn't reach before and they were marked out by like hollow blocks and basically one by one they were turned off and a tile was placed down the tile map was updated so we're going to go over how we do that like and subscribe and uh, let's get into it Okay, here we have our basic scene. Uh, it's just a simple controller and a tile map. Okay, all she does is run and jump and we want to design a button that she needs to press that will reveal some blocks that will allow her to jump onto this platform where she needs to get to to progress to the next stage. So I've got some assets here that I've used from a previous project that I used in the GMTK game jam. I've got buttons and the hollow blocks. So let's start with the hollow blocks. It's uh, really simple. This one, um, all it is is a sprite 2D. We don't need anything else. We do want to um, leave this empty block in. And I'll show you why later. So we've got empty block. We'll just drag that over. I'm going to have to scale it up because these are 32 bit uh, tiles and this scene is 64 so it's just going to look better if it's scaled up um, and then we want to offset by 16 so that it sits inside these squares which is just going to make it a little bit easier to place when we're designing our level so i'll save that to the environment empty block okay and then we'll need to make our button going to change the type to an area 2D. We're going to give it a collision shape 2D. Just make it a square for now. Let's zoom it in a bit. And then we just need the sprite, which will be these buttons. Um, and you might have different buttons, so you can just drag yours in. Might have got two frames tall, two frames that, and we want to use frame two because we use the gray ones. Okay, the offset, now when I was testing this out it was kind of wonky, it was 16 by negative 8 to get it to sort of sit, which will make it easier to place, and the scale need to be upped as well, otherwise it's not going to make any sense do the rectangle, its position, 16, negative 8, and 12, so it's up there, okay, happy days, nice and easy, I just want to reverse these so it's easy for me to understand what I'm looking at, okay, let's save this scene, just click the button, that's fine, we'll need to attach a script to both of them, actually just the button, we just need a script for, and we'll connect the body entered to this and we'll just go button sprite. Okay, so we need to get access to the button sprite. And on entered, difficult for me to type with the microphone in my face. Uh, three, set frame three. So that when the player enters into this, it'll just set it to be turned into the next frame, which will be the depressed. Not in a sad way, in a way that it's down. Where'd it go? So it'll look like that. Cool, save that. We've got our empty blocks and we've got our first scene. So we want to add a node. We'll just 
it would be a node 2D. Just rename it to blocks. This will be the thing that holds the, the empty blocks that we place around our map. So with that selected, we can turn on snapping and you want to come down to smart snapping or configure snap. Set yours to whatever size the tile map is. Mine's obviously set up to 64 by 64. Yours might be different, um, but you just want it to be the same as your tile map. It'll make it a lot easier when placing these blocks down. And then you just need to drag these into wherever you want to put them. So I'm going to put two here and two here. Actually, that last one. Okay. So you can see this is why I put the offsets in. Now, if you wanted to edit this, it makes it way easier. If it was at zero, zero, it would be in the center, which is not really when you, when you want to place it. Uh, so that's that. Okay, we can add the button. That doesn't need to be a part of this scene. We can place that here, that's fine. Cool. Okay, we want to add, while we're at it, add timer. And we're going to set this to something sensible like 0.2. Alrighty. Okay. Okay, so we've got the timer down. Okay, we'll need to add a script to our blocks. We'll want to place it in the environment scene. Create that. Okie dokie. We're going to need to get access to all these nodes that we've placed. So um, the first most important one will be the tile map. So we'll need to get and that's just going to be get children. So we'll get an array of all the blocks in this tree. Okay, we don't need the ready. Just leave that there. We don't need the process. Just delete it. Okay, let's connect some signals on when the button is entered. We want to add a script to this. And when the timer times out, we want to add a script to this. So when the player enters the button, all we want to do is start the block timer. So block timer, we're just going to make sure that it's not already running. And we'll add block timer dot start. Okay, easy peasy. So that'll start the timer and as they start, we are going to want to get the signal from the timer and this is where we want to do all of the heavy lifting. So we're going to create a loop through this. So we've got four block in blocks and we want to check if the block is visible. We're going to get the position and it will be block dot get transform dot origin. You can also get global transform when I was testing this before. They both work. We'll just use this one and we're going to divide it by the size of your tiles. This will give us the right position to place the block. Then We'll need to remove the like uh, dotted block. So set visible false. So now we'll need to place the tile in its place. Tiles dot set cell. So this is how you place a tile. You use set cell, and it's going to want the x and y. So that's block position dot x comma block position dot oh that's not dot y and then it does want a tile int we just pass in zero it's 
there. And then the next thing you want to do is do tiles dot update bitmask area and pass in the positions that you want to update. And that's the variable that we created here. Now, the reason you would need to do this is if you had bitmasks in your tile map, you'll need to use this function to make them work together. Otherwise, it'll just be single tiles before you call that function. Uh, it's not going to matter for me because I don't have auto tiles in this particular map, but I'm putting it in anyway just to show you that you need it in order for this effect to work properly. After this, we're going to want to break out of the loop so that it only does one. How's that? That's pretty cool. It's a nice effect. It's very clean, especially for one, when you're unlocking areas. Um, there's a couple of things we can do to uh, clean it up. This was my original code from when I was in the jam, but something I noticed when I was sort of running a couple of tests is that uh, the timer just keeps ticking, which I, I think is kind of a bit uh, poor it could be better so I added a variable on the cleanup created a block count and it's an integer and when it the timer is started so we're typing block count is set to um, blocks which is our array of the children in this so there's three dot size so that's all we can get we know that this three and then on when we start this we want cleared bo blocks cleared blocks we can just set that to zero and then we want to add an else condition if the block is not visible we want to increment cleared blocks so plus excuse me, plus equals one, then check if cleared blocks is equal to block count, block timer, dot stop. And that'll break us out of the loop. So just to demonstrate this, um, we'll do a print Stop the timer. Stop stop the clock. How about that? And we'll just get rid of all of this code. And then look at the debug. So that timer is still pinging every 0.2 seconds or whatever we set it up for. Now we bring this back. Like that. And it's going to ping a couple of times because it'll go every time that increments up. But once it reaches the three and it will stop and we'll break out of that loop so it stops that from happening which is good I mean this is not a very performant demanding game but you never know so yeah we can get up there no problems the player can trigger that how good is that anyway that's all okay guys that's all there is to it I hope you enjoyed that quick little lesson I think it's a really cool effect that you can use in your games let me know down in the comments if you're using this what you're working on I love to hear it just letting you guys know as well, I just posted a new class on Skillshare. So if you're a user on that website, you can head on over. The link's in the description. And you can learn all about improving jump mechanics in the Godot engine. If you're not a member of that site, you can sign up for a 14-day free trial. Otherwise, that's it. Um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.